Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Jazz at the Merck's live stream series, where we are live streaming from here, from the Merck itself, obviously with no audience. We are coveting it. That's a new word. We are distancing. It's just the crew and the musicians. <laughs> Mark Massey's at the piano today. Ron Estes over there on guitar. Great. We're doing a program today of all music from the Duke Ellington, the Duke himself. Some of his tunes, of course, that he made famous were also written by Billy Strayhorn, Juan Teasel, so we'll talk about that as we go along. We're gonna start off with one of his classics actually written by Billy Strayhorn, and this is our arrangement of Take the A-Train. <laughs> Thank you. 
That was Mark Massey's arrangement, if, if, you, if you liked it. If you didn't care for it, Ronnie did it. Oh. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> moving right along. Yeah. We have so much music for you today. This next tune, Duke wrote for a radio broadcast in 1930. And it was actually the first tune that he had ever written for a live radio broadcast. And, uh, and originally, the, the title of this was Dreamy Blues. That's right. Dream Never heard of that, have you? Because uh, shortly after he came up with that title, somebody said, no, you can't be calling it that. Because it, it was very popular when they did. They got a lot of letters, I guess, about it. So they changed the name to Mood Indigo. And this was written by Duke. Uh, Barney Bigard, who was his clarinet player, whose real name was Albany, by the way, Albany Bigard. And also writing credits uh, went to Irving Mills, who was his manager at the time. And from what I can figure out, he just kind of told Duke, uh, hey, Duke. What did he probably say, Mark? We talked about this earlier. That's right. Give, 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 me, some, uh, give me some credit. <laughs> Even though he didn't do anything musically. Even his credit didn't, was probably his, didn't do anything. That's right. He his credits credit were his connections to the rest of the world in publishing, right? That, that was his credit. Another interesting fact about this tune, Barney uh, actually came up with the idea for the, the, main, the main theme of this thing, and he is quoted as saying that he learned this from his clarinet teacher, Lorenzo Tio, in New Orleans, Ronnie. Ronnie, by the way, is from New Orleans. Well, he's actually from Homa, which is a little town outside of New Orleans. But did you know that, Ronnie, that this? And Lorenzo Tio referred to this as a Mexican blues. Where did that come from? <laughs> anyway, this is, uh, this is our version of Mood Indigo.
Here's a, here's a beautiful tune that was written by, by Duke in 1939. By the way, Duke was born in 1899. Yeah. And uh, he died at age 75 uh, from lung cancer. Bummer, 75 years old. And Billy Strayhorn was born in 1915. He died when he was just 51 years old. And he died of cancer also, very sad. Boy, this guy sure wrote a lot of wonderful music. Anyway, this is a tune entitled Daydream that Duke and Strayhorn collaborated on in 1939. Uh, and this was f actually first recorded by Johnny Hodges, who was really big with his own band at the time. He recorded it first in 19, 1949, excuse me, in 1940. In 1939, Duke left for Europe for a seven-week tour. A lot of people think it was a six-week tour, but no, it was a seven-week <laughs> seven <week> tour. <laughs> and he left Strayhorn uh, sitting at home in Harlem. And, and, it, and so while the Duke was gone, Strayhorn wrote a lot of music. And, uh, and he's actually the, the main guy that wrote this tune. Uh, Duke, as he frequently did apparently, took some credit for it, but this was actually written by Billy Strayhorn while Duke was in Europe for seven weeks. Daydream, we're gonna do this as a bossa nova, if that's cool with you. Okay. <laughs> Take two, take two, my mistake. One more, one more. Twice that long. Yeah, it should be twice as long as that. We just came up with this arrangement five minutes before the, we went on air. So as a uh, as Steve Martin used to say, excuse me.
In a way, I think it's kind of cool that we that we screwed up a little bit in the beginning because it makes me think of the old live TV shows, the old Steve Allen show and those, those uh, early TV shows that were live that my grandparents told me about because I was, I was too young oh, okay. to, to remember that. I, I was, saw you either. No, we, <laughs> Sherry didn't see me either, yeah. But yeah, it was, that was the best stuff was when they, Carol Burnett show, remember when Harvey Corman and Tim Conway, they would mess up and start laughing. Those were, those were good days. Uh, speaking of good days, it's a good day, as far as I'm concerned, any day when we can get Sherry Williams to sing a tune with us. Is that possible? Is, is there a Sherry Williams in the house? That, oh my goodness, she's actually here. Come on up here, Sherry. This should be our, our theme song yeah. these days. Is what? The, this, the title of this should be our theme our song. Our theme song days. should be st Struggling to Get Here? No. No, don't. Oh, don't. The yeah. title yeah. of the Yeah, <laughs> you're right. It should be Don't Get Around Much Anymore. I know. None of us are getting around too much, too far. I'm sorry. I always do that. <laughs> My shield is so clear. I forget, and then the sound guy has to make adjustments. That I always try to, I tried to eat with it on earlier. Oh, that was not pretty. Tough with a straw. <laughs> it was you know. yogurt, too. It was not pretty. <laughs> so, anyway, but that's so I can be close to the guys without getting into too much trouble. So, don't get around, I don't really. It's too, I don't get around much anymore. Want to set us up, Mark? Yeah. Yeah. Be happy to join you in a minute. Saturday dance Heard they crowded the floor Couldn't bear it without you Don't get around much anymore Heard they crowded the club Got as far as the door But they have asked me about you I just don't get around much anymore Darling, I guess My mind's more at ease Nevertheless, 
Yeah, yeah, it's a tough crowd out there, but I tell you. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Well, I figured if I sang it twice, I'd get the words right eventually. So I had to do what you guys did. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, no, you can use it. No, he didn't know you were going to use it. Can Hello, you? Mike. There we there go. There it is. Now Sherry, it is. I was just going to say, you can make up any words you want because... <laughs> You are Sherry Williams. Oh my goodness! I have to remember that. You can do anything you want, especially oh, around you. us. Oh goodness gracious! <laughs> well, thank you, dear. Thank you. Don't give me oh, too much leeway. You. I might get myself into trouble. Make up more words. Thank you, gentlemen. Continue on. Uh, I'm sure you got something wonderful for us. Lots of something wonderful. See you guys later. Okay. <laughs> Once again, Sherry Williams. Oh, goodness. Clap at home, everybody. Clap at home. Okay, we're going to feature our bass player. He's going to play an arco solo. Our arco. Do you know why they arco. call it arco? Do you know why they call it arco, Mark? Well, why? Because it's a gas. It's a gas. <laughs> Thank you. That was that was a that was a piano rim shot for that those was a piano watching rim out there. This is uh, was written in 1935 by Duke, and once again, his manager stole some of the writing credit, Irving Mills. What's up with this guy? <laughs> and somebody named Manny Kurtz, who I'm not familiar with. Now, interesting story about this. Duke had gone to North Carolina to play in a big tobacco warehouse. You couldn't make this stuff up today, you know. But it's true, he was played this gig in his, with his full band in this big tobacco warehouse, and after it was over, I guess the guy that owned the tobacco warehouse threw a party for the guys, and so I'm not sure if they had it in the tobacco warehouse or went somewhere else. It's really not that important. Uh, so Duke is at the piano, just playing some solo piano stuff there, and and one of his friends was, was hanging out with him there, and somehow the guy winds up with two women and yeah, that spells trouble right off the bat, doesn't it? So the women start arguing over this guy. So Duke somehow gets them separated. He's got, as he put it, one chick on one side of the piano and another chick, once again, those are his words, on the other side of the piano. And he composed this on the spot to try to get everybody to chill out a little bit in a sentimental mood. Thank you. 
Here's another tune, uh, this one. Uh, Mark, do you have any idea when, when he wrote this tune? By the way, a lot of these arrangements that you're hearing tonight, uh, I, I did that when Mark and I together put together a lot of these things late last night. And when, and when I say late last night, I mean <laughs> late last night. <laughs> and, and Ron just, uh, it was weird, he had this, uh, this uh, inspiration, this vibe, this spirit that just traveled through the ether and came to myself and to Mark and inspired us to do some of this stuff. Yes, it was just like that, Mark. It was kind of spooky, Ron. I don't know how you did that. <laughs> guys are having too much fun. Anyway, there's a uh, let's see, the arrangement we started off with uh, was Mark's, I think I said that on, on uh, Take the A-Train. By the way, a lot of people don't know this story, but uh, Billy Strayhorn is credited with writing it, but uh, the real story is uh, way back in the day, Duke and, and Billy Strayhorn were in Canada and, and they heard this song up there. And... Uh, they bought the rights to this song from this Canadian guy. What? Yes, I know, it sounds bizarre. Uh, and so they bought the rights to it, obviously it became a big hit and they, they claimed credit for it. Uh, and, and they, note for note, they, they used exactly what this guy had written. The only thing they did, Sherry, was they, they changed the title just a little bit because originally the title was in Canada was take the train, eh? Oh, <laughs> and if you and if you believe that one, anyway, this is one of Mark's arrangements on "Do Nothing Till You Hear From Me." Hit it, Mark.
arrangement by Mark Massey and well played by Mark Massey and Ryan Eshtake. Now, for those of you sitting at home or in your car listening, wherever you are in, the, in this wonderful universe, uh, you may have picked up on some funny things that Mark does. Mark knows every old television theme song, every one of them. Sherry, can you name an old TV theme song? Let's test Mark. All, right. <laughs> all in the family. Yeah, now it's funny you should that, say all in the family. That's a pre-quote. <laughs> that Mark was playing a lot of that. If you were listening carefully, he played a lot of that. Oh, Edith. Those were the days. Okay, you got that one. But what's the one you were playing, Mark, that you were playing, quoting? I was, clean, I was playing the closing credits. Okay, let's hear that again. <laughs> this, is actually, this is actually written by Roger Kellaway, a fantastic uh -huh. piano player, actually. You know. Did you all hear him playing that in his solo? He did. He's a tricky guy. And Ronnie, you played some quotes, too, didn't you? Do you remember what you played? Yeah, I don't either, but I remember thinking, hey. yeah, Yeah, he's denying those quotes. I was thinking, hey, Randy, you stole that. <laughs> he's denying them. Don't those quotes can be right. the quote, they can never be confirmed or denied, you know. Ronnie, you got a microphone. You can use the mic if you want. I said I work with Roger. He doesn't like quotes. <laughs> Roger Kellaway didn't like quotes? Well, what does he know? <laughs> anyway, that was fun. I hope you all at home or once again or wherever you are in the known universe, I hope you're all having as much fun or at least half as much fun as we are. I've known both these guys for, well, let me put it this way. When I first met these guys, we played the grand opening for the pyramids. <laughs> no, it's true. And, uh, where the Dead Sea was just starting to get That's sick. right, and we were there back when the Dead Sea was just starting to get sick. Thanks, Ronnie. I'd forgotten about that. Uh, let's see. Sherry, how are we doing time-wise? We okay? Uh, well, we're about an hour and a half. We're about an hour. Okay. Uh, well, a couple more. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think we're right okay. on schedule, Luther. I think. Okay. Uh, Let's see, should we play Solitude or should we play uh, Prelude? Let's do Solitude. Okay. Once again, uh, credit for this goes to Duke, Eddie DeLang, and you'll never guess this, his manager. Irving Mills. By the way, his manager, Irving Mills, who is supposedly also a musician, I really don't know that much about him, but I do know that he went by two other names. Once again, his real name, Irving Mills. <laughs> You've never heard this before. You guys are going to crack up. Mark did. I think I told Mark last night. He also went by the name Goody Goodwin. <laughs> How about a Diminished chord or something for that, Mark. Yeah. He also went by the name, this street that I live on, Joe Primrose. <laughs> Is that far out or what? So this tune is simply titled Solitude. I think originally it was called In My Solitude. Not mine, I mean Duke's, you know. Uh, he wrote this in 1934. And we're going to do this in a bossa nova style. And the introduction I kind of stole from uh, the intro to Girl from Ipanema with similar chords. So uh, here's our version of the 1934 in my solitude.
pretty sum. Let's do a tune by Billy Strayhorn. We know for sure this was Billy. Uh, as I mentioned, he, he died of, of cancer uh, in the latter part of his life. He spent a lot of time in the hospital in a place called Upper Manhattan Medical Group. So he wrote a song entitled Upper Manhattan Medical Group. He also did another one, since they were checking his blood all the time, he wrote one called Blood Count. And uh, so this is, a, this is a little bit adventuresome, I guess we would say. It's quite a bit uh, more challenging, more complex than something like Take the Train, eh? <laughs> so, well, you remembered that, Sherry, very good. Anyway, here it is, Upper Manhattan Medical Group by Billy Strayhorn. Blood count, Mark? Yeah, right on. Sure. Relax. Thank you. 
Manhattan Medical Group. How are we doing, Sherry? I think it's time for another vocal by Sherry Williams. And we need all the help we can get there. Another another composition originally, fully, completely by Billy Strayhorn. And if I remember correctly, didn't he write this when he was like, I want to say 17? 16 or 17. What was it? 16. 16. Do I hear 15? Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't there a story about, about what, what Get closer to that mic. When uh, Duke was, Duke. Uh, Is Ronnie's mic on? Yeah, that's all. Um, something about when they first met, and Duke was just trying to be nice, and you know, he was laid on the couch on a break, and Billy Strayhorn started playing the piano, <laughs> and he sat up. <laughs> you know, he sat up and went, "Oh, Psst, little boy, come <laughs> here. You're working for me." <laughs> Whoa, that's amazing. I never wow. heard that story. I don't know if it's absolutely true, but... Uh, wow. Sounds like a wow. true story. it does sound like a true story. There are not yeah. that many people around left that can, that know those stories. They're mostly gone, all oh, of man. them. The, uh, this the yeah. tune is entitled but, Lush Life, and, and dig yeah, the lyrics. And, I mean, to hey, think that a 16-year-old kid 16 wrote year old. Yeah. no way. He was 16, but he was like, had to be 90 years old his soul had to be 90, wouldn't you say? Sure. Yes, he was an old soul. He was 16, and he had never left Pittsburgh, where he was born. Oh, my goodness. He had never left the town. So there was no place for him to get this experience. It was, you know, in his head. Amazing. By the way, I, I, I checked. Uh, his real name was William Thomas. William Thomas. I don't remember that. Really? That's, that's his. That's, that's a good, instead of, yeah, oh, Billy Strayhorn. William you. Thomas Strayhorn. And, of course, thank Duke's you. real name was Edward Kennedy. Kennedy, yeah. And Kennedy. by the way, the Duke was born in Washington, D.C., and, and Billy Strayhorn was actually born in Dayton, Ohio. Dayton, whoa. I wonder when, because he was a child. I thought he was born in Pittsburgh, Home but I know he Wright moved Brothers. there. Yes, he yeah. did. Right. Did you know that he wrote Satin Doll originally for his mother, and they, the lyrics were too sweet and syrupy, so they changed... Uh, no kidding. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I, I, I think I read that in the biography. Wow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway. Now, folks, you so, see but, what you so see. we're big fans of Billy Strayhorn you and, see what and Duke Ellington. You see what you get when you tune in to or come to the concerts, <laughs> jazz at the Merck? <laughs> You learn something. You know, always. Oh, you know who's in the chat room? Kathy Siegel Garcia. Hi, Kath. Hi, Kathy. <laughs> that was great. Cool. Thanks for coming by. Yeah, we're, we're learning. We're getting it together. So I'm having fun. So anyway, we're going to finish. We're going to do this, this, this thing. Uh, love it. Go ahead. Your poignant smile was tinged with 
with the sadness of a great love for me. Ah, yes, I was wrong. Again, I was wrong. is awful again a trough full of hearts could only be a bore. a week in Paris that will ease the bite of it all I can is to smile in spite of it. I'll forget you, I will, while yet you are still burning inside my brain. Romance is mush. Stifling those who strive. I have a lush life in some small dive. And Simply one of the one of the greats. No. <laughs> Wonderful. She does everything right. Yeah. The first to me, the Sherry, the first job for a singer yeah. is to tell the story. Uh, yes. And you sure tell that story. Oh, that was that's the first thing. And then the other stuff is icing on a cake, as far as I'm concerned. Beautiful voice, great intonation, wonderful feeling. You've got it all, Sherry. I learned it all from the musician. Uh, Sherry, can I borrow 50 bucks? Yeah. <laughs> everybody, yeah. Everybody with whom I have ever worked, all you guys have always taught me something. That's it. No, that was wonderful, yeah. Sherry. Learn, so learn, children. Absolutely Thanks, wonderful. Guys. Oh, man. Oh, Do we have time for one more? Yeah, please. OK. Well, let's do for you. No, I'm thinking that don't. Or don't? Yeah. OK. Uh, this is, once again, a Duke tune from 1931. I was just hanging around waiting to be born in 1931. I still had a long wait. Not even a twinkle. 1931. And then in 1932, I didn't, I, I just learned this last night. In 1932, this tune was inducted into the Grammy Hall of Fame. So I thought, we, we, we have to close with a Hall of Fame tune. Any idea what this tune is, anybody? 
Well, the guys in the band know because I already told them. <laughs> this is a, it don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing, which was a very popular saying back in those days, and that's the way everybody felt, you know. It don't mean a thing, man, I don't care if it ain't got that swing. So we're gonna start this one off with, uh, with Ronnie and Mark soloing at the same time while I walk over one chord, what we would call in the music world, the five chord. It's gonna be a D7 alt for those of you taking notes. Uh, and, and I will say it's been a, a real pleasure uh, being here once again at the Merck and playing for all of you people out there. Can't you just see them guys? Just close your eyes. There you are. Anyway, this is the don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. And of course, yes, that is Ron Eshte. There's no dispute about that. R the great Ron Eshte on guitar uh -huh. and the great Mark Massey at the yeah. keyboard. Yeah. So thank you for joining me, gentlemen. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Sherry, for having us. And here we go. And, and of course, the ruthless, huge. No, Luther Hughes. <laughs> Lex I think Luther. I, I think I like ruthless. I think I like, yes. The greatest I I criminal like mind of the 20th century. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Here we go. One, two, one, two, three.
that's all, folks. <laughs> Have a good evening, everybody.